Good morning, St. Paul, St. Andrew's family, and welcome to worship. I'm Bishop Thomas J. Bickerton, the resident bishop of the New York Annual Conference, your bishop. I am here today looking at the West Side Campaign Against Hunger, and in front of me is a sanctuary that is the most relevant I've seen in the New York Annual Conference in the last year. Uh, you are transforming your space into a place where people's needs are being met Monday through Friday with needed food and attention and support. And I give God thanks for your faithfulness in transforming not only your building, but helping to transform lives. As we continue to walk through these days of uh, COVID-19 and finding our way into a, a new reality, one thing we can say for sure, uh, our God is faithful. And God has been with us through this journey, and I know that God is with you as you continue your journey of faith. So as you gather to worship today, gather with joy. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in the wonderful ways that God opens doors of possibility for us to be in ministry one with another. Come, let us worship the Lord. Deus chama a gente para um momento novo, de caminhar junto com seu povo. É hora de transformar o que não dá mais. Sozinho, isolado, ninguém é capaz. Por isso vem, entra na roda com a gente também. Você é muito importante. join us in the call to worship. We come to this time and space for worship. We come together to find peace, meaning, connection, and God. All are welcome. Doubters and seekers, young and old. Those who rejoice today, those who mourn this day. All are welcome. Those who are Yankee fans, and even those among us who are Mets fans. Hey, watch it, Connie. Sorry, Gina, you're right. God welcomes all, and so do we. We're glad you're here. Now let's worship God together. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, 
firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What lights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. pray with me ever living ever loving God when we are hesitant you are patient when we flee from danger you catch up to us on the road when we cling to division you break down the walls between us come to us love us into freedom and free us to love in the name of the risen Christ we pray amen in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's swift ride to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme or plan, can ever block me from Hi, I'm Blake, I'm a junior at Columbia and involved with SPSA's LAMP. Today's lesson is from Luke 27 and tells the story of what happens that first Easter as two disciples leave Jerusalem and head towards the village of Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of the followers of Jesus were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had seen indeed a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not find him. Then Jesus said to them, "Oh." 
how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. continue in the reading of Luke 24. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to us. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. soldiers took and crucified our friend and so it's time we're on the road again on the road again though some people claim he's alive again I don't think he would revive again so we're taken to the road again on the road again a stranger found us walking on that highway and he asked us then about the things we're talking about on our way but our way is on the road again our hopes were dashed and we're on the road again 
Our sweet Jesus was betrayed by his own friends. And so we had to get on the road again. On the road again. A stranger found us on that road again. The strangest guy who went and acted like our friend. You never know who's on that road again. On the road again. We found someone we never thought we'd see again. And eventually, he taught us how we all could see again and be again on the road again but this time in a different way again because we knew we had a task to do again that caused us to take to the road again on the road again because the way of Christ is on that highway with some other friends who seem to see that his way is still our way and our way is on the road again on the road again <laughs> You know what hits me this time, looking at this story, this famous passage about the road to Emmaus, is how important this bit is about the road, about the road. Now, this image of the road comes up a lot in Scripture, as you probably know, and it comes up in important places, in important ways. Since Jesus lives a life on the road, the road is where so many of his chance encounters happen, like the woman who is healed by just touching his garment on the road. Like Bartimaeus, who's healed from blindness as he sits by the side of the road. Or Zacchaeus, who looks at Jesus as he passes by on the road and is moved to repent of his unethical business practices and engage in restorative justice, and so on, and so on. Then there's the Jericho Road, a place of danger and redemption, the scene where Jesus sets the parable of the Good Samaritan. And there's the road to Jerusalem, where on Palm Sunday, people throw their cloaks and coats and palm branches as he's riding into town. And of course, there's the road to Damascus, where Saul sets off breathing threats and violence against the people of the way, as uh, Jesus' followers were called back in those early days. That road to Damascus where Saul himself encounters Jesus and in a blinding flash changes his life and changes his name to Paul. But rereading this passage in Greek, this passage about the road to Emmaus, reminds me that the Greek word for road, hodos, has a, a bigger significance than I had recalled. Because before Jesus' followers were ever called Christians, they were called anthropon to hodon, the people of the way. You could say the people of the journey. You could say more literally, people of the road. I love that. Imagine if we were acting like we were the people of the road, the people of the streets, the people out with the people. That would be a movement. That would be a movement. As we've been reading in John's Gospel the last few weeks, after Easter, after the resurrection, most of the disciples are not out in the streets, not on the road again. Where are they? They're locked safely inside some house. Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid that whoever did what they did to Jesus might do the same to his followers in order to stamp out this dangerous and revolutionary movement. So, they're not on the road. 
But in today's story, these two followers of Jesus are on the road. They're on the road again, going to a place called Emmaus. Who are they? Well, one is a person whose name is Cleopas. The other, we, we don't know their name and we don't know their gender. It's not specified. And where is Emmaus? Nobody knows. <laughs> Did they get there? That doesn't seem to be the point of the story. These two are out there on the road again, but not really out there to spread the, the word of Jesus, to spread the way of Jesus, the way of love and compassion, the way of justice and reconciliation. They're not uh, trying to do all of that. They're trying to instead put as many miles as they can between themselves and the trouble that they've left behind them in Jerusalem. But Jesus catches up with him. Jesus catches up with them. Jesus has a way of doing that. But they don't recognize him. And we all have a way of not recognizing him. It's funny, but these post-resurrection stories of the risen Christ, almost nobody ever rec recognizes him. But I can't judge them. Because I think from time to time I've had some kind of encounter with the risen Christ, but didn't quite figure it out. Certainly didn't figure it out till, till later. At CBS the other day, I had an exceptionally thoughtful encounter with the clerk there. When I got back, I, I looked carefully at my very long CVS receipt. And I found that, of course, I had been helped by Jesus. Jesus tells me, wherever three or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of you. Jesus tells us, behold, I will be with you always to the end of the age. And I think that we recognize Jesus most easily in communion, in community as we're doing the work together, the work that Jesus calls us to do together. That's how these two travelers finally recognize Jesus, not by what he says, but by what he does. They recognize him in the breaking of the bread. That's true throughout the Gospels, I think. He, Jesus teaches a lot. He tells a lot of stories. He uses a lot of words, sure. But mostly Jesus does stuff. Heals people and feeds people. He turns over tables and he breaks the rules. He eats with the marginalized and sticks up for the ostracized. He raises the dead and he raises hell. He lives for other people. And he dies for other people. It's what he does. Living the Christian life is a, is a challenging thing for me. I've spent a lot of time thinking about Christian ethics. I have three master's degrees and a PhD in Christian ethics. And I'm always still trying to work out what living an ethical life as a Christian is all about. What it's like to live a life in imitatio Deus, in imitatio Christi. Uh, the imitation of Christ, as Thomas Akempis put it many, many centuries ago. What would that look like? What would it look like to live a life imitating Jesus, doing the things that Jesus did, the things that he does? I don't think I'll ever get it right. But there are days that I feel like at least I'm on the road. <laughs> I'm on the road. I'm on the road again. John Wesley asked the early Methodist sir, are you going on to perfection? But Wesley didn't seem to think that perfection was so much a destination. He claimed not to really know any perfect people, Methodist or otherwise. But he knew that perfection was a useful goal out there, a scriptural goal, something to urge us to do better, to be better to be better than we were yesterday, 
to be better tomorrow than we are today. So that's the question I want to leave us with as Emmaus Road people who look for an encounter in the spirit of the risen Christ. As people, people of the way, as people of the road, are we on the road? Are we on the road? Are we on the road to perfection? Are we on that journey? Are we at least on the road? On the road again, looking towards the one who rose again, the one who promises to always be our friend. The one who calls us to the road again. On the road again. I think it's time to open our eyes again. Knowing strangers should be treated as our friends. I think it's time to get on the road again. I think it's time to get on the road again. this road with us. You find us with excitement, pain, joy, anger, and everything in between. God, we find ourselves much like the disciples, on the road between what is and what could be. A world of pain and heartbreak, where Easter morning feels far off. It's hard to feel the joy and abundance of the resurrection when the world is still so broken, the news of mass shootings begins to blur together because there are too many and it becomes hard to differentiate and keep track of them all. The list of those lost to police violence continues to grow and black families fear for the lives of their children and loved ones. The pain of the world is great and overwhelming and you feel so far from us. Yet you show up in unexpected ways, right beside us, walking with us through this broken world and offering to share your body and your blood with us when all hope feels lost. God, continue to walk beside us, to call us to new life through that bright Easter sunrise of resurrection. God, guide us towards you Help us walk together on the long journey towards your kingdom, to go with friends to make the way easier. Help us to walk with the lonely and the despairing, to offer community to all that we may encounter, and to practice resurrection every day. 
as we join your words of prayer. O God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My name is Robert, and I am a member of St. Paul St. Andrews. I've been here for about four years. I am a member of the Shelter Committee. I'm also a member of the maintenance and security staff. I am truly grateful for St. Paul St. Andrews. It has shown me purpose, spirituality, and a purpose in life. I'd like to thank you for your offerings, your continuous offerings has enabled us to paint the entire building. We have a new door system, and we are in the process of continuing the roof process. It's been a couple of years now, but we're gonna get it done thanks to your continuous offerings. Lord. 
in peace. Go out onto the road again, following Jesus out into the streets of the city to increase the amount of love and justice in our world. Be well, be safe. Amen. Hamba nati kululi we tu. 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 Kululi, kululi, 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 kululi. Come walk with us. Come walk with us. The journey is long. Come walk with us. The journey is long. Come walk with us. The journey is long. Come walk with us, the journey is long. The journey, the journey, 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 the journey. Come talk with us, come talk with us, give meaning in life. 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 Give meaning, give meaning, 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 give meaning. Listen to us, listen to us, our sorrow is great. 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 Our sorrow, our sorrow, 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 our sorrow. Come stay with us, come stay with us and share in our bread. Come stay with us and share in our bread. Come stay with us and share in our bread. Come stay with us and share in our bread. And sharing, and sharing, and sharing our bread. And sharing, and sharing, and sharing our bread. And sharing, and sharing, and sharing our bread. And sharing, and sharing, and sharing. Hamba nati, hamba nati, kululi we tu. 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 Kululi, kululi, 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 kululi we tu.